vitamin D has gotten a lot of attention lately, and data from the Harvard Nurses Study published recently indicates that vitamin D status impacts on the risks of developing IBD in otherwise healthy women. So vitamin D consumption from food and supplements was inversely associated with ulcerative colitis. Not only dietary and supplemental vitamin D intake, but exposure to sunlight, race, and geography, the regional UV light radiation intensity. So getting your vitamin D level from 22 to 33, if you're a member of the Harvard Nurses Study, was associated with an almost 50% reduction in the risk of developing Crohn's disease. Now, there have been some studies on the impact of vitamin D on people who already have Crohn's disease. For patients who are in remission with Crohn's, a reduced level of vitamin D in blood is associated with a reduction in interleukin-10. Interleukin-10 is an anti-inflammatory cytokine that has a protective role in inflammatory bowel disease. But this was not a general reduction in all cytokines because TNF-alpha, which is a pro-inflammatory cytokine, was not reduced. Administration of 1,200 units of vitamin D3 per day for one year reduced the rate of relapse by 50% in a prospective study. And 1,000 IUs a day given to patients with active Crohn's disease was shown to decrease bone loss. Okay, now B vitamins and homocysteine. This is a slide that shows uh, a couple of metabolic cycles. And the one on the upper right is called the transmethylation cycle. At the center of this is an amino acid called homocysteine. Homocysteine is produced continuously in the body. It is a toxic amino acid and has been shown to damage blood vessels, uh, among other adverse effects. The body eliminates homocysteine by recycling it back to the amino acid methionine, which is an essential amino acid, and that's the left part of that cycle. And that requires folic acid and vitamin B12. It also filters out homocysteine, and that's at the bottom of that slide. Cysteine is an antioxidant. It's a precursor of glutathione and taurine, which are strong antioxidant amino acids and have a protective role on numerous body functions. The conversion of homocysteine to cysteine requires vitamin B6. Okay, so with regard to folic acid, I've mentioned before that 5-ASA derivatives inhibit folate absorption, which may produce deficiency. Impaired folate absorption increases plasma homocysteine levels, and elevation of homocysteine has been shown to be a risk factor for thrombosis. Folate supplementation of patients who are on 5-ASA derivatives may decrease the risk of colon cancer, and there's an interesting study recently which looked at colon cancer risk in patients with ulcerative colitis um, as a factor of homocysteine levels and as a factor of folic acid levels. Elevated homocysteine with normal folate increased the risk of colon cancer in this cohort by 250%. That is, there was a 2.5-fold increase. Elevated homocysteine with reduced folate levels increased the risk of colon cancer by 1,700%. So clearly both homocysteine and folic acid are important to keep in mind and, in my view, worth monitoring. Now, vitamin B12 deficiency has been described in Crohn's disease and is always looked for and often supplemented. This may be the result of ileitis or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, as I mentioned. Reduced B12 without frank deficiency raises homocysteine, which may increase the risk of thrombosis. A thousand micrograms of B12 can correct a certain type of anemia, megaloblastic anemia, which occurs in some patients with Crohn's disease. The median levels of vitamin B6 of IBD patients are reduced compared to a controlled population. In the general population, this was not studied in patients with IBD, the risk of colon cancer is 
inversely associated with levels of vitamin B6. So it is possible that lower B6 in IBD patients is also associated with an increased risk of colon cancer. B6 is critical for the synthesis of cysteine and plays a secondary role in removing homocysteine. Now, the main way that cysteine is taken as a supplement is through N-acetylcysteine or NAC. It's a very common antioxidant supplement. The administration of 800 milligrams a day of NAC to patients who are taking five ASA derivatives increase their effectiveness in ulcerative colitis according to one study. And that may be a separate effect due to the antioxidant activity of, cyst of cysteine. Now zinc is sometimes low in patients with Crohn's disease. It's been especially studied in adolescents. Zinc absorption is impaired and there is also increased fecal loss in patients with IBD. Low plasma zinc is associated with a number of conditions that can be observed or measured, including acrid dermatitis, it's a skin rash involving the extremities, decreased activity of zinc dependent enzymes, metallothionine, which is one of them, is important for detoxification and helping the body rid itself of heavy metals like mercury, and a reduction in muscle zinc, and also a loss of taste. Zinc supplementation has been shown to improve the growth of zinc deficient adolescents with Crohn's and may help to promote a total clinical improvement in those children. High doses may be needed in active Crohn's disease. Standard supplementation is 20 to 25 milligrams. 100 milligrams may be needed or more. And there is more information on the website of the Foundation for Integrative Medicine. It's mdheal.org and at a website called pilladvice.com, which I created to deal with drug supplement interactions.